Hey, what's up, y'all? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use Google Colab. Now, if you don't know, Google Colab, short for Collaboratory, is a free service from Google that lets you run Python code directly from your browser. It works like a Jupyter, aka Python notebook, if that's something you're familiar with. But what's great about it is that you don't have to worry about installing Python on your computer, setting up a virtual environment, connecting to an IDE, and all the hassle that comes with those things. So before I show you how to set up Google Colab, let me give you a quick demo of the service. Here's a notebook I created that includes a combination of pretty text generated with Markdown, and of course, some Python code. If I run it, it reads data from a file I have stored on Google Drive, processes that data, and then generates a couple plots. If I wanted to, I could share this report with other people. And as you can see, I'm doing all of this directly from my browser, which is really cool. So without further ado, here are nine questions and answers to help you get started using Google Colab. Question one, how do I create a new file? There are two primary ways to do this. The first is to go to colab.research.google.com. And if you're signed into your Google account, you should have the option to create a new notebook. It'll get a default name like Untitled Zero, but you can click on the name to change it. What I don't like about this method is that it automatically saves this file in a folder called Colab Notebooks in your Google Drive. And if you're creating a lot of files, that folder gets pretty cluttered pretty quickly. So the second way to create a new file is to do it within Google Drive. This is nice because you can launch a new notebook from any folder in Google Drive. The first time you do this, you'll need to install the Colab app, which you do by right-clicking, select Connect to More Apps, search for Colaboratory, and then install the app. Now navigate to the folder where you want to create a new file, right click, and then choose Google Collaboratory. Note that Google Colab uses IPython notebook files, not .py files. IPython notebook files give you the ability to run Python code and generate inline plots and generate descriptive text and headers with markdown syntax and do lots of other cool things. Question two. How do I know which version of Python I'm using? Google Colab periodically updates its Python version. So anytime you start a new notebook, you should check which version of Python it's running. Do this by typing import sys, print sys.version. Then click runtime, run the focus cell to see which version of Python you're running. Question three, how do I create, edit, and delete cells? See this thing right here? It's called a cell. Cells come in two flavors. You have code cells for organizing and running blocks of code, and text cells for displaying fancy text with markdown syntax. You can use the plus code button to create a new code cell. Here I'll type a simple Python statement like print hello, and then I can click runtime, run the focus cell to execute it. You can use the plus text button to create a new text cell. Text cells render markdown. Here I'll enter some basic markdown. And then I'll hit the escape key to exit the edit mode and render the markdown. Now, if you don't know markdown, it's a really simple language for generating formatted text. You could learn it in 10 minutes and you'll find it's supported by a lot of different platforms like GitHub, Stack Overflow, Trello, and a bunch of others. Since creating new cells is something you'll do a lot, It'll make your life a lot easier if you learn the keyboard shortcuts for stuff like this. So I'm going to go to Tools, Keyboard Shortcuts, and I can see that to create a new code cell, I actually get two options. I can insert a new code cell above my selected cell with Command-M-A or Control-M-A if you're on Windows, and I can create a new code cell below my selected cell with Command-M-B. One thing that's a bit odd is that there's no default key command for creating text cells, but if you scroll to where it says add text cell, you can click in the box and create your own keyboard shortcut. I'm going to use command M1 for this. If you want to edit a code cell, just click on it and start typing. If you want to edit a text cell, you have to double click on it and then start typing. And then if you want to delete a cell, you can click on it and use the trash can icon. 
But remember, keyboard shortcuts will make your life easier. So I recommend you use the shortcut Command-MD if you're on Mac, or Control-MD if you're on Windows for this. And if you delete a cell by accident, you can undo commands with Command-MZ on Mac or Control-MZ on Windows. Question four, how do I run code? Most of the time, you're gonna run code on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. We've seen how if you click on a cell, you can click one time, run the focus cell, and that'll execute the cell that you're on. Obviously, that's a pain in the ass, so you're gonna wanna remember that shortcut, which is Command-Enter or Control-Enter if you're on Windows. But there are a few other ways to run your code. So if I hit Shift-Enter, it runs the cell I'm on and then jumps to the next cell, which is really nice if you wanna run a bunch of cells in succession. This is the way I run my code most of the time. Another cool trick is, if you have a cell full of code, but you only wanna run a small snippet within that cell, you can highlight the snippet you wanna run and then click runtime, run selection. So for example, if I set a variable x equal to five, and then I set y equal to x minus two divided by three, star star four divided by two, maybe the value I get back for y isn't what I expected. I can make sense of what's happening by highlighting and running portions of this compound statement until the value it returns differs from what I was expecting. You may have noticed in the Runtime tab, there's actually a lot of other ways you can run your code, but I'll leave it to you to explore those. However, one last thing I wanted to mention is this Restart Runtime option. So right now, my session has variables that I created, like x. x is a value, and it's taking up memory in my session. If I want to get rid of those objects and start a fresh new session, as if I hadn't run a single block of code, I can click this Restart Runtime option, and that'll delete all the objects in my session and unattach any packages I imported. Now if I try to print X, I'll get an error because it doesn't exist. One thing I find a little bit annoying is that although it deletes the objects in my session and frees up my memory, it doesn't erase all the cell outputs from the last time I ran my code. Fortunately though, you can go to Tools, Keyboard Shortcuts, and then create a shortcut for the option Clear All Outputs. I'll set mine as command M2. And now if I run command M2, you'll see all my old cell outputs disappear. Question five, how do I install a package? Google Colab comes pre-installed with a bunch of packages. So there's a good chance it might already have the package you need. If not, you can do exclamation mark pip install and then the name of the package you wanna install like data table. If you want to install a particular version, you can do exclamation mark pip install data table equals equals 0.9.0, .0, or if data table is already installed and you want to upgrade it to the most recent version, you can do exclamation mark pip install dash dash upgrade data table. The leading exclamation mark in these commands tells Colab to run a shell command. You can use it for other things like exclamation mark pwd to print the current working directory or exclamation mark pip freeze to print a list of all the installed packages. Another useful one is exclamation mark pip show and then a package name like pandas to look up the currently installed version of a specific package. Question six, how do I look up the documentation of a function? Another great trick with these IPython notebooks is that you can pull up the documentation of a function in a separate window in a very readable format. For example, if I import the pandas library as pd, I can then type pd.dataframe question mark, run the cell, and then I get this help window that tells me the class signature for data frame and its doc string. Question seven, how do I use autocompletion? Autocompletion is another great shortcut you should learn, not only because it saves you time, but also because it'll prevent you from making spelling errors. So if I type pd.dat, Colab will give me a list of suggested autocompletions. At this point, I can either click the autocompletion I want, 
or use my arrow keys and hit tab to select something. Now let's say I start typing something like pd.data and then I hit backspace or I temporarily change cells. My auto completion box will disappear. To get it back, I can use the shortcut control spacebar. Another place this comes in handy is if I type pd.dataframe open close parens and then I hit control spacebar, I get a list of parameter auto completions. Super useful if you forgot the name of a parameter or if you forgot how to spell something. Question eight, how do I read data from a file? There are a couple different ways to read data from a file in Colab. The first and probably the easiest way is to click on this folder icon to open up the file explorer and then click the upload button and then select the file you wanna upload. Assuming you haven't changed your working directory, your file should get uploaded to that location, which means you should be able to read it with something like pd.readcsv and then the name of the file. The downside to this method is that at some point in the near future, Google Colab will actually delete this file from my instance. So it's short and easy, but not reliable for persistent storage. If you need persistent storage, one easy solution is to use Google Drive. Start by uploading your file to Google Drive. Then come back to the File Explorer in Google Colab. Click Mount Drive. Go through the OAuth setup. And then once it connects, you should see a drive folder like this. Since I uploaded a file in the root of my Google Drive, I can read it using pd.readcsv drive my drive iris.csv. Question nine, how do I save my work? You may have noticed that Colab auto saves your work every few seconds. If I type something, you can see the little all changes save message pop up next to the help link. Of course, if you wanna manually, manually save your changes, which is a good habit, you can do that too using Command S on Mac or Control S on Windows. All right, there you have it, nine questions and answers to get you started using Google Colab.